Welcome to Liberty Thoughts, episode 21, where today the topic is going to be about 10 items or things uh, that you should invest in now to be prepared for a better future. 10 of them. And this doesn't matter if shit hits the fan tomorrow, or in two years, or three years, or ten years, or if Trump wins the election, or if Trump loses the election, or if shit never hits the fan. These ten items are things that I have invested in, that I think everyone should be invested in for a better future for themselves, no matter what happens. And I'll go through these, give maybe a brief overview of them, uh, <clears throat> I won't spend too much time on each, any single one probably, um, and then maybe later go over all of them on their own separate video, breaking them down further of what I do or different ideas that I have heard other people do. And not all these are physical items that you have to run out and go buy. Um, and these are things I invested in over the long term. Um, so I haven't, I just didn't start investing in these. I have been investing in most of this stuff for a very, very long time. And like I said, it's not too late uh, to do it yourself. And you don't even have to do it on a large scale. But start somewhere. And like I said, these are 10 items I have invested in myself. So let's get to it. The first thing, I wrote them down here so I won't forget them. First thing I believe is very important, and I have done this for at least three years myself, is invest in your body. Now what do I mean by this? I simply mean by uh, taking care of yourself, by exercising, and by trying to eat better. Now if you are like me, an American, a uh, standard American diet, not healthy at all and it is very damn hard to get away from but how many you know it drives me nuts when I see people on like Facebook or whatever posting of oh we're gonna go kick Antifa's ass okay are you and you're gonna eat a box of donuts on the way while you're doing that because you're 300 pounds overweight and out of shape uh, yeah you probably will be able to but you're gonna have a heart attack at the exact same time too so Good luck, enjoy that. And you don't have to be a bodybuilder to invest in your body and exercise. I myself just do simple uh, body weight exercises, quite frankly, because I don't want to invest in a bunch of equipment. And uh, you know, I have a bicycle and I run. Not that hard. No, I have never been one uh, to be overweight or anything. I can't gain weight if I even wanted to. But. Still, I realized one day after playing a pickup game of basketball with my family uh, that I was sore as hell for like a week afterwards and it was not that intense of a game. And I was 20 some years old and thought to myself, okay, this is bullshit. I do not like this. I got young kids. I want to be around for them. I want to be around for my grandkids. I want to, you know, be able to keep up with them and be active with them. So I made that commitment right then and there to start investing in my body and working out uh, you can start as simple as three times a week and it don't have to be anything rigorous or you know nothing crazy and there's plenty of like I said YouTube videos you can watch on how to do body building exercises what the best ones are it doesn't have to be complicated to get some pretty good and massive results number two would be to invest in your mind. Now this is very important because first off your body has to be uh, in a good place. You have need to at least be okay with your body, feel good about your body and feel good yourself. But then the next important thing is your mind. Uh, the world is a very very negative place and if you can't handle that negativity and you have no certainty on what your purpose is then you're just gonna be wandering through life with nothing going for you really how I work on my mind is I meditate every day and I pray every day I try to have a relationship with God uh, <clears throat> if you don't believe in God if you believe in the universe or 
just any kind of higher being, I mean, as long as it isn't Satan, then, that, okay, that's, that will work for you if you are speaking to the universe. To me, that's God. God is the universe to me. Uh, and, like I said, work on that. Feel that you need to know what your purpose is in life. Have a calling. And, like I said, it will it changed my life. And I just started recently meditating. Um, I've been praying for a long time, but never really give it full effort. Uh, but I recently started meditating about four or five months ago, and I'm far from perfect at it, but it has definitely helped with my confidence and just a sense of certainty of knowing that I am doing what is right and what I am, what my purpose is, that I have a higher calling in this life and that I'm going to succeed at that. So, invest in your mind. And especially if shit hits the fan, you're going to need a solid mind to be able to think through things and be able to handle things, because Lord only knows what's going to come up. So, very important uh, item to invest in. The next item to invest in would be relationships. And this is relationships with your wife, or your kids, or your you know, siblings, or your parents, or just your neighbors, whoever. Uh, hopefully you have a great relationship already with your wife and your kids, but there are several people that don't. If you don't, like I said, uh, it's not all their fault. Like It's your fault. Every relationship is your fault, and for every relationship you have, you should try you know, not manipulate it, but you should try to make it be a peaceful relationship and uh, make them see, you should always just be trying to build a good relationship with anyone and everyone, so especially people close to you. And then like I said, your neighbors, uh, if shit hits a fan, you're going to want to know <clears throat> who can do what, and if you're in a rural area or whatever, you probably already know that. But, and then how you go about <clears throat> asking them or whatever before something happens, I don't know. Uh, you just have to kind of feel that out yourself. <clears throat> so, said something very important to invest in now. That will help you no matter what happens in the future. Okay, next one, number four, would be to, especially if she hits a fan, invest in guns or weapons and ammo. We as Americans have the Second Amendment. If we lose that, like the rest of the world has lost their guns for the most part, there's a few other countries that still have them, but if we lose that, uh, we're screwed. <laughs> uh, no, there will be millions of Americans that are not going to turn them in. Um, so they'll have trouble finding that, finding those ones and everything compared to how the rest of the world just handed them over. But uh, guns are an equalizer in any kind of scenario. Uh, Shea's fan, you're going to want a weapon. You're going to want a gun. Uh, and then ammo. Ammo's getting to be very valuable. Shea's fan, <clears throat> you're going to be able to barter with that. It's almost a dollar a round for almost every kind of round right now. Uh, if that continues, like, that could be almost a, it's basically a round of ammo is, you know, going to be worth more than our money. It already is. And especially, what would you rather have if shit hits the fan? Uh, ammo or money? Your money's going to be worthless. It's already getting that way. So, invest in ammo if you do got weapons. Have plenty on hand and store it properly. Uh, other weapons, I myself, you know, I love knives and tomahawks and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm not trained to fight close quarters. And I really don't want to if I don't have to uh, ever fight close quarters. The other weapon that I want to invest in myself and haven't yet, just because of time and finances and everything, is bows and arrow. Uh, partly because A, it's silent, and then B, uh, you get several arrows. Like as long as you don't lose those arrows, you're you know not you're going to continue to have those arrows. So the ammunition is not as big a factor as you know bullets, because once you shoot it, unless you reload it. Uh, it's done for. So, 
Okay, the next one, number five, would be uh, to invest in your location. Very, very important for if shit hits the fan. And even if it don't, why would you still want to live in a shitty place with shitty people? The best people I believe in the world, and partly because I've grown up around it, but I've traveled a little bit too uh, in other parts, is, you know, rural areas. You're going to have the nicest people. Uh, they love to gossip. I'll warn you there. But, and then, just the way it is, but it's usually a red state, Republican, uh, and red counties. That's where your nicest people are going to be. You're safest there in those locations because those people are not going to come and headhunt you or try to loot you. They are all got their own, you know, they all carry, uh, have weapons, have guns. Uh, I live in rural part of Kansas and I'm pretty sure everyone has a gun in their house and there's not murders being committed every single day. Uh, it's as safe as can be. People still leave their doors unlocked and vehicles unlocked uh, were in my town. Yeah, you go an hour away to, uh, I don't know, Zach's population, under 50,000 still, but it's our nearest Walmart. And yeah, you better lock your stuff up there, and yeah, there are kidnappings and stuff, crazy stuff like that that happens there. But in my little town, you know, hardly anything happens. It's major news if something gets broke into, and the people usually continue doing it, and they always get caught. Uh, but location, location, location is very key. Especially if you work remote right now, why stay in the city? Don't stay in the cities. If shit hits the fan, you stand about a 1% chance of surviving the city, probably. You get to a rural location, uh, even if you don't make any friends, you have a hell of a lot better chance of surviving. Especially if you invest in all of these items that I'm about to get to. Okay, next one, number six, would be to invest in real assets. And what do I mean by real assets? I am mostly talking about silver and gold. And if you're able to, land. Uh, land prices are kind of ridiculous. They'll continue to get more ridiculous until all of a sudden they fall completely to the bottom. They will eventually someday. That's what I'm waiting on. Uh, prepare to try to make your move when land prices crash. So, and silver and gold right now are going, starting to go through the roof and will probably continue that way uh, with the Fed just continuing to spend uh, or print money endlessly. So invest in silver and gold. I've done this for a long time. Um, and there's a lot of people out there saying that. There's people saying fit Bitcoin. I don't know. I, I get a good feeling and bad feelings about Bitcoin. I really don't know. I mean, if shit hits the fan, how are you going to get that, you know, off of, you know, your hard drive or whatever? You're probably not. Who's going to want Bitcoin at that time? Most people aren't going to want gold or silver either because, I mean, a few will, the smart ones. But most people are just going to want food, water, and, you know, weapons is, and shelter. That's going to be the main things people want. We'll barter for it. So, but to have gold and silver on hand, it's something you can take with you. It's not in the bank, uh, but you know, don't be leaving it in your house, in your closet for everyone to find. Uh, or, because like I said, that's the first place people go to look. Okay, next one. And this goes along with location. You obviously cannot do this one if you live in the city. Number seven would be to invest in farm animals. Okay, you went to a location, small property, it don't take much, a couple acres. Uh, my little place that I'm on is six acres and we have quite a bit. Yeah, I rent other stuff and have access to other stuff too, uh, through family and everything. But invest in farm animals. We have lots of chickens, we raise meat birds, we have egg layers. Uh, we recently uh, purchased some milk cows and they are able to survive on our few acres and we have a huge garden. Uh, they don't take much, 
to be able to produce a lot of food. Yes, if you've never done any of that, there is going to be a huge learning curve. But it's not uh, that hard, really. I mean, you got to do chores, but the chores don't take that long. The milk cows, we will have to feed hay in the winter because we don't have grass growing season round and everything. Uh, but, like I said, we're planning on, if shit hits the fan, we're going to still be able to at least be having eggs from our chickens. Uh, we know how to raise and butcher chickens. We will have milk. That was something, like I said, we recently purchased because when the COVID pandemic started, uh, there wasn't, milk never ran out in our location, but it was close to running out. So we realized, oh, that would be something really nice to have if things ever got even worse. And plus, if they don't, we're going to be able to sell that rich, nice, healthy, raw milk to other people who are interested in their body for health. I mean, it all, all of these connect together. Okay, next one. Number eight, invest in skills. Okay, what do I mean here? Gardening. Do you know how to garden? Do you know how to hunt? Do you know how to, you know, raise animals? Would you be able to butcher something if you got it, if you killed it even? You know, would you be able to butcher a deer, a cow, a pig, a chicken? Not that hard, really, but like I said, there's a learning curve. Um, what, what, are you handy with stuff? Are you a mechanic or good with, you know, housework stuff? Invest in skills to help you for the future or just make your life simpler and you know a lot of people use gardening as their getaway time and just their almost their meditation time it's their zen time uh, i don't use it for that i just enjoy it and enjoy getting the uh, harvesting is what i enjoy most about it and you know i save my own seed of certain uh, vegetables do you know how to do that like i said those are all skills do you know how to even just play a musical instrument, like guitar or piano or something? Like, how are you going to occupy your time if shit hits the fan? You're going to need things to do. Uh, time will tick slow, and you're just going to have to, like I said, occupy your time with something, let alone have skills that will make your life easier. Number nine, invest in books you can learn a lot from books obviously uh, not everyone likes reading but you can even invest in audiobooks and just listen to that or even podcast and listen to podcasts I myself try to read but I also listen to a ton of podcasts and stuff like that I've learned a lot from various podcasts you know if you in your books and I'm talking you know you don't know anything about survival or how to be you know homestead or prepared invest in a couple survival books uh, and you don't necessarily have to read them right now just invest in them that way you have them for if shit hits the fan I would at least skim through them invest in some history books what's going on now has a lot of it's happened in history before this is nothing new most of it need to know history it's very valuable you learn a lot You'll learn a lot just of how to survive and how the world used to work. Uh, if, you know, shit hits a fan and we go back to, you know, grid goes down, it's very good to know a little bit of, you know, Old West history and stuff like that. Like I said, it's amazing how much you learn just by listening to podcasts or reading a history book. And I've always been fascinated with history. And I believe it is uh, one of the most important topics in school to be taught that is, you know, not taught and there's a lot of hidden history out there but also just invest in you know like classic novels uh, like I said shit hits a fan you're gonna have a lot of spare time on your hands probably and be you know bored or whatever because you don't have TV anymore and, well I haven't had TV for a long time and I don't miss it I keep myself occupied but invest in novels to entertain yourself you're gonna still want entertainment you may not have movies anymore or whatever you know be able to watch sports anymore so you're going to need other stuff to for your entertainment and the way people used to do it 
is by reading novels. And you can even have someone read it out loud to you or whatever if, you know, have family night where you or your wife read it to everyone, a novel. And it's instead of watching a movie, you do that together, you know. So invest in books, learn a lot from them, can learn a lot, and you will learn a lot more if you have more time when she is a fan to be reading those books. Okay, last one I got wrote down, be number 10, would be to invest in equipment. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean for if she hits the fan and grid goes down and everything, you're gonna still want, some vehicles may, might be running still, probably not newer ones because there's too many electronics, but what about if you purchase an older vehicle now, like, from the 70s or before, maybe 80s, and they'll most likely still run. You can get them fairly cheap. Store some extra fuel. Uh, do you have a bike or, you know, kind of horses? Think about transportation. What are you going to do for transportation other than your own two feet? Now, maybe that's good enough for you, uh, depending on what you're all planning on doing, I guess, too. But, I mean, horses could be considered equipment because they are a work animal when they're going to be have to use for transportation possibly. Who knows what's all going to go down. But you might need you know spare parts for your guns, your weapons, just spare parts for the house or what you know. Do you have any extra lumber to board up your windows and stuff like that, you know. Uh, a lot of household items like do you have nails and screws and just all tools. Do you have any of that stuff to be able to do simple repairs on the stuff that is going to break down and you know you won't be able to just run to the hardware and get what you need as need. I don't know what's all going to take place. I hope and pray uh, whether Trump wins this election or loses that everything's going to be okay and we kind of get back to a semblance of normal and you know, and our government start give, allowing us more freedom, start contracting. Hopefully Trump will do that. I don't see it. Uh, worst case scenario is shit hits the fan sometime this year, next year, 10 years from now. We are going to possibly be in war with China and possibly civil war soon here in the States. That's why I want to be prepared and hopefully as many Americans as possible are prepared and I believe these are the 10 items that are most important for people in America and all over the world to be as prepared as possible. I think it is something like they say within the first year of a grid down scenario, this is for America anyways, that like 80% of the population is not going to survive. That is massive. I intend on being one of that 20% that survives, but I'm also planning on thriving. And no, it's not going to be easy even for me, even though I'm a lot more prepared than a lot of people. I'm still not as prepared as I want to be. So, I mean, and I've been doing this for a while uh, as I can. I hope that, like I said, that doesn't take place. I hope that doesn't happen. And But if it doesn't, these items are still worth... Uh, worth a lot. They've helped me in my life, they've made my life easier, and I said they're worth they're worth a lot to me, and they're something I will continue to invest in uh, the rest of my life. And I will hopefully be able to pass that on to my kids, these 10 items, for them to invest in themselves. And I hope, like I said, you Seriously, think about these items, wrote these items down. If not, I guess go back. I will put them in the description, this list, just a brief uh, list of it. But then also, like I said, leave a like on the video, please, and comment below uh, what you've invested in or if there's something I missed. And then I will probably, you know, if this video is popular, gets likes and comments, I will break each one of these downs of how and what I do individually for all these items. When, if, shit hits the fan, it's going to take place. 
I mean, my best guess is within the next decade if it's going to take place. Uh, I said I've been following this stuff for a long time. People have been saying any day now for as long as I can remember. Things are happening so fast right now. It is unreal. It's not too late to prepare in these ten things, uh, but you might not have much time either. Depends on what goes down, down this November in the election and before that. Who knows? Uh, we're living in very crazy times in a crazy world. But I'm glad I'm here, and I'm glad I am prepared to take on whatever comes. I am ready. I do not want shit to hit the fan, but I am ready, if it does, to survive it. I hope you are too. Please subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned then so you can catch all of the Liberty Thoughts episodes. Take care and good luck.